Hi, my name's Starsky and welcome to From the Studio on Clubbing TV. In this episode, I'm gonna take a look at something that's become a bit of a modern classic and a great all-rounder. It's the Roland TR-8S drum machine. And that little demo was made using the new FM modelled voices that came with version 2.5 of the firmware that was released in August and that came with the six new voices, four new effects and some probability options that weren't there before. And I'll go into all of that in a minute but just in case you're not aware of what the TR-8S is and what it does, let's take a look at some of the basics first. <laughs> And this is the big brother of the TR-8. The TR-8 was the first one that Roland made that came out with their ACB technology. That's the analog circuit behavior. So it doesn't model the sound, it models the actual analog components of the electrical circuits. And by doing so, creates the sound, which means that they're really good, really close representations of the classic drum machines from the 80s, like the TR-909, the 808, the 707, the 727, and the 606, which are all in the TR-8S. Here's the 808. I'm gonna load in a 909 as well. Seven oh seven, seven two seven, much more Latin. And the classic little six oh six. But on these, we can hear that we've got sort of compression and all sorts of things happening. If we go into maybe which one? The nine oh nine compressed kit. And the eight oh eight drive kit is this. Inside here, we've got all sorts of effects. So you can take the old drum sounds and do what people used to do in the studios with them, and that's mess them up and make them just dirty, nasty, big, fat, horrible, and beautiful. On the back of this, we've got eight different outputs. So we can assign each of those sounds to a different output if you like. So you can then do external processing as well. So it really is a fully featured little emulation of those machines. So for a live kink style, hands-on experience, it's fantastic. Go to the kick drum, snare, hi-hats, open hats. So if you're used to doing that sort of programming, it's super, super simple. So that's a great starting point, all those classic drum machines, all those effects, but then we've got hundreds, thousands of other sounds as well, and the ability to load your own samples. But we're not restricted to drums on this either. Back in here, you can see we've got all sorts of nice goodies like Vox hits. Plus synth sounds. Chords, these are nice. As are these pads. So it's almost like a groove box, but not quite. You can't record in different pitches on different pads like you can with a groove box. But we do have this motion sequencer down here. So let's maybe try and do something like that really simply. Let's start with a basic hat. With motion recording, we can change the pitch of each of those. So it can be done, but it's not easy. But that's the basic overview of what it does. Loads of things in there. I haven't shown samples yet. You can load your own samples. It can't sample itself, but you put them on a memory card and then you load them in. In fact, I've got a little Lindrum that I sampled a couple of days ago and put it on this. Let's just find that. There we go, a little Lindrum. 
really dirty, gritty, and quite horribly nasty, that actually, but just showing that you can load samples. Well, let's take a look at the new firmware now, the version 2.5 and all the new bits you get with it. If we take a look at the app again, we can see the kick drum here. We've got loads of things we can play with. And these have all been made using the new FM models. If we look at the app, we can see all the things we've got to play with, all these various bits here. If we go back into the original FM models, like FM Simple Kick, for example, there's only one knob, and that's to morph between different sounds. Whereas with the new one, there's loads to play with. Really, really nice all that, isn't it? It's just got some real dirt to it. But of course, it doesn't always have to be a kick drum sound. Because after all, it is basically a synth engine and you've got the same sort of thing for the snare, the toms, the crash, the clap. If we go to this one here, And there I'm tweaking the FM depth with this knob here. We can assign that knob to any one of those parameters. If we look down here, let's assign it to, I don't know, low pass cutoff. So it just gives tons more options. That's the drum sounds. We've also got some new effects. This is the new hat do reverb, I think it's called. You can hear it's got a pitch shift on it. Pretty nice. And we've also got a new pitch shift delay as well. Bring it in here, pitch shift. We'll just change the tuning on that. Or we can go lower. And we've got some new master effects. We've got a vinyl simulator that does all crackles and a little bit of wow and flutter. So it's like the record's a little bit warped. And this fattener is absolutely delicious on, a, on an 808 kick. Let's go shift and master. We're on the high pass filter now. Let's turn it all the way down to the fattener. When we twist this knob clockwise, we get the odd order harmonics. And when we twist it anti-clockwise, we get the even order harmonics. So two different types of saturation or distortion. delicious that on that kick drum isn't it let's try the vinyl simulator going back into the app we can see we've got noise level wow and flutter let's turn the controller to the noise so when we wiggle this we're now changing the amount of noise there we go nice and loud and finally we've got some probability options we didn't have before Let's add some hi-hats. Let's put the last step on eight so we're not listening to it over and over. And let's take step five and let's add a probability to it. So let's put the probability on 50%. So it's playing about half the time now. We've also got a probability of the subs or the ratchets. Let's just put this back on 100%. And let's add a sub to it. And let's add a probability of that being a sub or just a single trigger. So a ratchet or a single trigger. So if we hold this, probability of the sub, we'll put it on 50% again. So now sometimes it'll play a single hit and sometimes it'll play two or three or whatever it's set to. 
four. And we can have the probability of it playing anything or the sub as well. So if we go into the probability settings and put that on 50 as well. So now 50% of the time it will be so now 50% of the time it will play something, 50% of the time it won't, and 50% of the times it plays something, it will play a ratchet. There you go, we've got all three variations in that little clip. We've also got a master probability, and that then offsets all the different probabilities you've already put in. So it doesn't affect any of the, any of the triggers that haven't got a probability, but if you have got a probability, it will add or take away from how much that is and that doesn't make any sense whatsoever but let's put this back on a single hit let's put the probability of that at 90 percent so it should play almost all the time like it is then we go to the master probability so we press shift or pattern select and accent is it So press TR, record and accent, and then we get a master probability. So that's the offset, and we'll take it down to 64, 65%. So now it will play about half the time. There you go, it's less than 90% anyway. So another nice little addition. And I think that covers pretty much everything I can in this shorter time. What are my final thoughts on it? Well, this is a great all-rounder, isn't it? It's got all those classic analog drum machines that everybody loves, plus you can load in whatever you like, and it's got effects, and it's got separate outputs. What's not to love? It's a really great thing, and it's a really nice live instrument as well. You've got access to enough parameters on there to set up a good set. And if you've done something in the studio and you haven't got anything to play those sounds on, load them into this, and you're done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, don't forget you can catch it whenever you like on our Clubbing TV official YouTube channel on the From the Studio playlist. And if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments, and I'll see what I can do to answer them. And if you are into this sort of stuff, do take a look at my Starsky Car YouTube channel as well, where I've got a lot more deep dives into all sorts of things, and this as well. So I'll see you in the next episode of From the Studio.